2004. Do you have a gardening problem? We can help you with that. A program dedicated to help you grow a better garden, maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make that grass look a little bit greener, as well as preserving what you grow. We're here to help you with your gardening problem. You're tuned in to Garden Talk Radio. You're listening to the most informational-packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the Internet with your host, husband and wife team Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Thank you for joining us and to talk gardening for the next hour. It's a jam-packed show, whether you're listening to us through one of the 16 radio stations our program is broadcasted on in 2020 through a radio app, through our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, under the Season 4 tab at the top of the page, podcast replay or in-studio video replay. We thank you. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, to grow healthier trees, and make your grass look greener indoors and out, plus preserving what you grow. Many ways in which you can get a hold of us. The simplest way would be through our G- or through our email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. You can find all of our social media links at our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. And you can also jam your fingers in the phone and give us a call anytime, day or night, at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-SHOW. And if you call during the show and we can't fit you in, we will call you back. Got a show, big show lined up for you. We're going to talk about mulching in segment one. Segment two, uh, four proven slug control methods. And Jill Mashiki will be with us, author and podcaster. So before any more hesitation, let's get in the program here and talk about mulching. Number one, the importance, the reasons why, and some of the mulches that we would recommend for you to utilize in your garden that we use in ours. Sure. So mulching is important for many reasons, but one is it helps retain the uh, moisture in the soil. Another one is it helps suppress weeds. And sometimes it feeds your soil. It, it, as it as the organic matter breaks down, it will feed the soil. Uh, leaves, for example, when we apply the leaves to our beds, the worms will migrate up and feed on them and break that down and take it into the subsoil and feed the microbial life with that as well. So mulch is very important. Uh, you've seen soil that is not being covered, that's been left bare in your garden, over winter, over a rainstorm, and it has this weathered look to it, and it almost look, you know, it's like very bare and plain and discolored and doesn't look healthy. We want to mimic what nature does, and that is to incorporate and cover the soil wherever exposed soil is at, whether that's in the yard, around trees, or in the vegetable garden. We want to cover it even in raised beds or containers. You can mulch in containers and do it very successfully. I think mulching in containers is a great idea, especially if it's a container that um, is going to be an area with a lot of sun. That way it will help so that you don't have to water it as much, and that's definitely something to think about. So you can mulch with leaves and straw. Well, leaves, we don't, many people don't have the leaves now, but for for, for us. We have leaves that we saved from last Fall. Yeah, we always stockpile in the garden uh, unshredded leaves, and then as we need them in the spring, we will mulch them with the leaf mulcher and apply them to the beds that uh, until we run out of them, and then we go to the next one on the list, which is straw. Yeah, so straw is c- could be fairly readily available if you live in an area where you can get straw. Otherwise, a typical bale costs like eight bucks. Yeah, five to eight dollars. And sometimes it might be worth it if you want. A nice mulch. Straw is definitely a nice mulch for a lot of uses in, in the garden. There there are 
applications in which straw has been sprayed with a chemical. So if you're directly getting it from a farmer or you are a farmer, because we're in a lot of the uh, Midwestern states where farming is very prevalent, you know what your straw has been sprayed with, if anything. I grew up on an agricultural farm in southern Illinois, and for as long as I was on the farm, we never sprayed wheat at all, which was the, the product that we made straw from. But I know there are some applications in which people do spray the straw, and it depends on what that chemical is and if it will leach into your vegetable garden. Right. So straw is another one. Shredded paper. And we shred all of our – we shred all of our old mail. We shred a lot of stuff. We shred our show notes. Yeah. Um, we we you do our we do our our show on paper and people yeah. are like well that's not very environmentally friendly we, we print on both sides but also you know you look at it technology fails so it's not good whenever we're trying to do a show and our system goes down and we've got physical paper so that's right. how we do our show it's just it's just easier for us yes. but then we are responsible and we shred it um, or we would recycle it if we weren't going to shred it and then we put that back into the garden. And you can use it as mulch. You can use it as filler for the bottom of some containers. There's a lot of uses for it, but shredded paper is definitely a good, a good mulch. Yeah, shredded paper. Uh, we've, we've done a video that you dig a hole much deeper than what you intend to, and you throw your shredded paper, your mail in it. And what that does, it's a sponge mechanism and absorbs the water. And then you put the soil back on top of it and you plant in that pile of, of soil where the, the shredded paper is below. And that wa- that moisture wicks out of this paper and into the soil to feed your plants. Winter has been long, but it's finally spring. It's time to order some plants, seeds, new planter pots, and maybe a wind chime or two. Now is the perfect time to bring your garden back to life. When you get ready to work in a garden, you always forget to buy something. This year, don't let the mosquitoes remind you. Holly and I are excited to host a Spartan Mosquito giveaway for three listeners each week to win some product by Spartan Mosquito. We will announce the winners at the end of each week on Facebook. Enter to win by emailing gardentalkradio at gmail.com. In the subject line, put winner. You must be 18 years or older living in the contiguous United States where products are state approved. Radio show and podcast listeners are eligible. For all details, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and click on the Spartan Mosquito tab at the top of the page. This contest ends Friday, June 5th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can claim your prize as soon as it is announced on Facebook. If you do not claim your prize within five days, we will announce a new winner. Thank you, Spartan Mosquito, for participating with the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener for this giveaway to our listeners. So you can also use seed and so you use grass clippings. If you use grass clippings, you want to make sure that they're as seed free as possible. When we say seed free, if you have this like back area, dandelions, like dandelions, or if you have this back area, maybe that um, doesn't get mowed a lot and it's got some grass seed, probably don't want to use that as mulch. Um, chemical free means that if you treat your lawn, if you pay somebody to treat your lawn with something like a weed and feed or some sort of broad leaf um, removing chemical, if you're not sure what your herbicide. lawn herbicide, if you're not sure what your lawn is being treated with, if you pay somebody. You should certainly ask them if you want to use those grass clippings. Most of the time, it's a broadleaf herbicide. And the problem with that is that that will kill a lot of your vegetable plants. It'll kill your tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, to name some of the few. And poison the soil. And poison the soil. So even if you think, okay, well, I'll put it in my compost, it will not break that, that uh, persistent herbicide will not break down in the compost and can further cause damage. So if you know that you're spraying your lawn or you pay somebody to spray your lawn, don't put those grass clippings on as mulch. And what you also want to do is you want to make sure that they're dried. So after you're done mowing the lawn, you just can't, you can lay them out on your driveway. They're going to dry pretty quickly in the sun with the air, and then you can use it as mulch. Why, what, why can we not use grass clippings that are wet right out of the bagger? Okay, so if you don't use the, if you use the grass clippings right out of the bagger, they're going to create mold. They're very, grass clippings are very high in water content. And if you just start piling those as mulch, they're going to get moldy and gross. And, and there'll be additional bacteria that will grow and can hamper and, and damage and hurt the plants in which you're growing. Next thing you can use as mulch is a commercial material called garden paper, 
or you can actually use newspaper. But garden paper is a little thicker than newspaper. It's more like a, I think like a butcher paper almost. Yeah, but, but it is porous and it's biodegradable. Another thing you can use in, um, is pine needles or pine mulch. And that is very uh, good to use. People, there's misinformation on the internet. No, that- really? <laughs> Abe Lincoln told me. Oh. So there's, there's misinformation on the internet that you cannot use pine needles because they'll supposedly make your soil acidic and this is not true. Once the pine needles fall off of the tree, their acidity level um, drops significantly so it doesn't affect your soil. Now, the, 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 the garden paper, I want to touch on that in a minute. It is a chemical-free, biodegradable garden paper that you roll out. They come in widths and lengths of different dimensions. Um, and it, you, it, it's a green material, basically, and it will prevent weeds from coming up, and it will help retain moisture in the soil, allowing the plants to re- get moisture, uh, but, you know, just like a, a weed fabric, but on the organic means, on the organic side, because weed fabric is not an organic uh, product at all. Many people use it and reuse it over and over again, but it simply is not the case. Right. So um, that's another thing. And then you could use a combination. So say that you want to use something like your pine needles, but you have a lot of newspaper. You can use a combination and you can put the newspaper down and then put the pine needles on top of it. That newspaper will break down, I think, fairly quickly. Um, But that gives you an option to also just add a little bit more um, compostable material to your soil. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to our show. This is our 13th show of the season. We appreciate you listening each week here in 2020. Did you miss last week's show? We talked about how to plant trees correctly, as well as uh, what chemicals that we would advise not to use in your garden. And worm expert Bruce Galley was with us. You can find that podcast on our website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, or you can search your favorite podcast platform for the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, or we will make it easy for you. You can send us an email at gardentalkradio at gmail dot com and insert please give me show twelve and we'll send it over to you so you don't miss a thing. Well, talking about not missing a thing, we don't want you to go anywhere because we will be talking about four proven slug method re, uh, uh, ways to get rid of the slugs in your garden. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, a program to help your garden grow better. You can bet the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener's phone lines are always jammed during the show. So Joey and Holly keep their phone lines open 24-7 to help you. Call anytime, 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-7469. Or just remember, one 800 927 show S H O W. Leave a message and they will call you back. Looking to kill weeds without using dangerous chemicals like glyphosate? An all natural weed killer may be just what you're looking for. Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer is a concentrated herbicide derived naturally from corn. It's four times stronger than regular table vinegar, so it packs a punch against all kinds of pesky weeds. Use Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer to safely kill dandelions, crabgrass, clover, ivy, and more. It's perfect for driveways, pavers, fence lines, and other outdoor surfaces. Green Gobbler Vinegar Weed Killer is an effective and powerful herbicide, but it doesn't stop there. It's also certified for organic use, so when used properly, it won't negatively affect soil or wildlife. Since Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer is pure vinegar with no other additives, pet owners can let their pets out to play right after application. Search for Green Gobbler Vinegar Weed Killer on Amazon.com today. We offer a hassle-free money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants. To multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds, RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Use coupon code TWVG at checkout and get 10% off your entire order. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com.
Trim Bin turns any chair into a workstation. Comfortably sort your herbs, dried flowers, cannabis, and more. Easily collect pollen with a static brush and mirror finish collection tray. High walls keep your work contained. To get yours, visit harvest-more.com. Made in California. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. The Simply Solar Greenhouse is a one-piece molded fiberglass greenhouse that is easy to install and maintain. Multiple sizes available. Check them all out at migreenhouse.com. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit blueribbonorganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. Responsible watering. Accurate, fast, and efficient. Earth conscious. Visit waterhoop.com. Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Power Planter Earth Augers, Ivy Organics, Root Maker, Pomona Universal Pectin, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Pro Plugger, Tomato Snaps, World's Coolest Floating Rain Gauge. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. You can come back to your radio. We're back from the break. Well, I know you didn't go anywhere because you appreciate the companies that support our program and the companies have let us know that they are seeing you buy the products that we that they sponsor our program with and without them we do not have a program. So we thank them and we thank you for being part of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Well, Holly, let's get into the topic here that many people struggle with, and that is slugs in the garden. And we've had this problem, too. Yeah, slugs are they are sneaky, and they will eat. Some know, people think they're cute. I, I mean, I guess. If you're not a gardener, I guess you're, you, they're cute. Yeah, before they eat your, your whatever, they right. definitely will often eat hostas, too. And a lot of people, you know, don't care for that. Um, so one thing is you can bring in, you can bring in wildlife. Many animals will naturally eat slugs, um, and snails in the garden. So you could do like a small pond, a bird bath, bird feeders. The birds will be bathing or eating or whatever. They'll see this and then they'll see the slugs because they, they have this natural keen ability to look for the meaty bugs and then they'll take care of the slugs for you. But if that doesn't work. Well, and side note, they eat the other bad bugs too. Yeah. They T- tomato them. hornworms and everything. And people are like, I don't want birds in the garden. They're gonna, they're gonna be bad for the garden. And they're one of the best, besides worms, I think birds come in a close second. They're very helpful, happy garden helpers. Yeah, we put a, a bird feeder in the center of our garden and the activity is just a hundredfold of, of the birds that's coming in. Even though we don't have anything uh, of stature growing in the garden, we've planted a lot, but we bring those birds in now to create a feeding habitat or a feeding channel or, or avenue so they know where the food's at. So when they, the, the plants get larger and bugs get on them, they will continue to come in the garden in the center. And then as they fly out, they'll see these insects that they can consume. Right, for sure. Um, another thing is you can make a place for them to live. So what you can do is you can lay a board on the ground, like a large piece of plywood, so they have a place to go during the hot part of the day. And then in the evening, you can lift that board up. You'll find many areas of slugs, and then you can just get rid of them. So you can um, you can relocate them. If you have chickens, you can give them to the chickens. You can just stomp on them, whatever works for that. Um 
you know, yeah, people may that. people may think, well, why are we doing that? It, it's an, it, it's very unique how they'll go feed and then they'll find a place to to stay they healthy. Like that, they like that cool protection. Protection, yeah. So and then that's... you flip that board over, and there's all those slugs that you can dispose of at, on uh, uh, your your own choice. And it, it really does work very, very well. And you can do this in multiple places throughout the garden, uh, putting boards. They don't have to be, you know, just planks, plywood, whatever the case is. You can lay them up against your raised beds and they will, uh, hibernate or, or go there. And then and it's an easy way. If you got chickens, they will go nuts, uh, for those particular, uh, slugs in the garden. So you can also pour salt on them. Or around, but it's, it could possibly mess with your soil. So if you do have a slug problem, what you could do is you could pour them, pour the salt around the soil, like around the plants, not close to the plants, but around the perimeter of your garden. And that could take care of the slugs. But then you have to keep in mind that once it rains, it's going to wash into your soil, absorb into your soil, um, or if you water. So if you see the slugs, you could just sprinkle some salt on them. But if you, see the slugs, you might as well just pull them off your plants. So that is an option. Slugs do not do well with salt. They, what it does is it draws the water out of them. Here you are watering your plants, taking a step back, and admiring the work you've put into your garden. You're thinking about how just a couple weeks ago you had little seeds or starter plants. You say to yourself, wow, these guys have grown up so fast. With spring comes great weather for planting fruits, vegetables, flowers, and bam, along come mosquitoes. Mosquito season is here, and thankfully so is Spartan Mosquito. Enjoy the fruit of your labor. Holly and I are excited to host a Spartan Mosquito giveaway for three listeners each week to win some product by Spartan Mosquito. We will announce the winners at the end of each week on Facebook. Enter to win by emailing gardentalkradio at gmail.com. In the subject line, put winner. You must be 18 years or older living in the contiguous United States where products are state approved. Radio show and podcast listeners are eligible. For all details, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and click on the Spartan Mosquito tab at the top of the page. This contest ends Friday, June 5th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can claim your prize as soon as it is announced on Facebook. If you do not claim your prize within five days, we will announce a new winner. Thank you, Spartan Mosquito, for participating with the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener for this giveaway to our listeners. Now, the next one may upset some people. Uh, when it comes to slug control methods, and that is utilizing beer to attract and to kill the slugs. Well, that's not any different than using salt on the slugs. Well, some people uh, don't drink salt oh, as okay. a recreation on the. Oh, week. I see yeah, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. You know, oh, not my beer. Right? Not the good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So what you can do is there are traps you can buy that have. Um, a roof on them so that when it rains does not the beer doesn't have to be replaced but what you do is you take a, a shallow for, for the rest of us how do we do it with if we don't right. want to get this fancy slug uh, you, yeah you yeah. can just take like i don't know like a sour cream container whatever right. you got and you just bury it at soil level and then you pour your beer in there and then what happens is the slugs are attracted to that and then they fall they fall into the container and then they get distracted by the beer and probably drown but maybe hopefully they drown drunk um but yeah so we want to plant that away from your plants so if you plant it or bury it yeah or i'm sorry bury it away from your plants so if you have a certain area that you could so that it's they're not like going you're you're drawing them away from the problem like you wouldn't want to put in the middle of your garden because if they're on one side of your garden then they move they, quick. They move quick, you know. And then, oh, I'm going to walk through the garden. Okay, now I see all these plants. Whatever. If you put it away from that area, then they're going to go that direction. It, it's the same thing with the Japanese beetles. If you use that pheromone trap, you don't put it in your yard. You try to put it four yards away because then everything will go to that yard. If you put it in the center, everybody's going to come to that particular place, and then the whole deal. But okay, what kind of beer is best? People so, is it just any beer or what what is the best here? So for us we noticed that the the slugs like the hoppier beer like the IPAs. The higher IPAs is that the, is, is it higher? Hop, the IPAs are have more hops. Okay. More of a hop flavor. So I don't like IPAs and I had bought a beer accidentally that was very it was an IPA 
And we noticed that the, the slugs really seem to like it. And you do have to replace it if you don't have the fancy slug uh, mortuary uh, where, where they are going to go. You could probably get creative with that oh, and yeah. take like the lid for something else and put it on there and put some holes. And But you, yeah. you would want to elevate it enough to where they can actually go in and not That's struggle. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You could use like maybe straws or right. toothpicks. And but it, it works very well. It yeah. really oh, does yeah. work well. Uh, also, you can go commercially and get slug pellets. However, the slug pellets are not necessarily organic, and when you put them on your yard or your garden, other animals can eat them and be toxified, and actually it can hurt and even kill some of them. Um, so that is not always the best method. Um, but over over the last few years, wood pellets have become inter- have been introduced as a slug. Um, pelletized type of material and it's found to be quite effective uh it's been discovered that the slugs are just as bothered by the itchiness of that rough wool as as some of us people are whenever we put on a wool sweater so well it tears up their underside i think too maybe a little bit maybe they're more sensitive to that and Um, and people say well what about just putting egg shells and sand around the plants those have Okay results. Mm-hmm. The, I would say out of all these, the most effective is probably going to be the beard. Right. Um, and second would be putting the board so they have somewhere to go and then you can oh yeah. uh, attract them that way. And the, the birds too. Um, uh, and people always say, well, just put copper tape around the raised bed or the container. The, the only disadvantage to that is most times uh, to have it effective, you've got to have that uh, a slight charge a tr- uh, incorporated in that, which would be like you hook up a nine volt battery, uh, when wires and you, you run that copper, a uh, wire or tape around the container. So when they get close, they get zapped. That's a whole mess of, of stuff that is not even, not, res- it, it's a lot of fuss for when there's other methods that are just as effective, if not more. Right, for sure. Well, now that the weather is starting to warm up, Holly, you will want to protect your garden from the various beetles, weevils, boars, and including those Japanese beetles. And what a better way to pre- prevent those pests from destroying your garden and then by controlling them while they are larva. Grub Gone is an easy to apply granule product that can spread onto your turf to successfully control grub invaders. Developed by Phylum Bioproducts from our naturally occurring bacteria, Grub Gone is a non chemical BT product that specifically targets only scarab pests and it is safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. And if you already have those Japanese beetles flying around, Beetle Gone is an organic water dispersible powder that you can spray directly onto your edible plants. You can find all this out and a whole lot more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L P H Y L L O M bioproducts.com. I want to get that email or that, that website right. Phylumbioproducts.com. P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. Do not go anywhere, as I know you will not. We will be talking with podcaster and new author Jill Mashiki will be with us. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, a program to help you grow a better garden, indoors and out, landscape, trees, and a whole lot more. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you, creating holes fast and efficiently with ease. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tree Ripe Citrus Company has top quality produce that comes right to your neighborhood with the freshest peaches and blueberries you'll find. To find locations, go to tree-ripe.com. Do not settle for the rest when you can have the best peaches and blueberries with Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Go to tree-ripe.com. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night dries clear and odorless it will not clog your sprayer deer defeat works for 30 days through rain snow and freeze safe effective and works on rabbits money back guarantee to purchase go to deerdefeat.com and use code radio to save 10 percent on your order deer defeat it can't be beat 
Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. ShipDrop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, ShipDrop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Grow! Grow, 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 give your plants what they need, Neptune's harvest, grow, oh, oh, grow, grow, grow. Hello, gardeners, it's Anne from Neptune's Harvest Organic Fertilizers in Gloucester, Mass. Neptune's Harvest shows amazing results on everything you grow. Grow, 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 grow. With Neptune's Harvest, the results will show. Show, show, show. This ain't no jive. With Neptune's Harvest, your plants will thrive. We're not kidding. Your garden will be award-winning. Neptune's Harvest is available at your local garden center or grow store. To learn more, go to NeptunesHarvest.com. Grow, 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 Neptune's Harvest. Stay tuned and you can win a gallon of Neptune's Harvest Liquid Fertilizer, a $50 value, following the commercial break. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Neptune Harvest, Happy Leaf LED, Dripworks, We Grow Indoors, Deer Defeat, Harvest More, Blue Ribbon Organics, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, Chip Drop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center is the place for all things gardening in the Milwaukee area. If you've never been, you need to go. They've got bulk material that can be delivered right to your property. You can also pick it up based on the restrictions in which they're dealing with currently with the pandemic that we are all involved in and the safety protocol that they have set forth for their company. You can also go to their greenhouse right there on the premises and get your vegetables, your herbs, your native plants, your containers and a whole lot more. You can visit them at 4930 West Loomis Road, just off of Layton. You can give them a call at 414-282-4220 and check them all out at bluemills.com. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Thank you for being part of the program today. We always appreciate wherever you're listening, however you're listening to the show. You can always visit our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, to catch up on all past shows of video and radio. You heard during the break that you can win again from Neptune's Harvest. Holly, what are the prizes offering this week? This week they are offering one gallon fish and seaweed blend. One four pound bag of crab and lobster shell, one four ounce yet best yet biting insect spray, also one t shirt, one hat, two koozies, and two stickers. That's a hundred fifty dollar value. This is open to listeners eighteen years and older living in the contiguous United States. The prize will be shipped to you. For more information, you can visit us at the Wisconsin Vegetable dot com, and just click on the giveaway tab to enter and all that good information. Email Garden Talk Radio at gmail dot com. Put in the subject line Enter Me. And in the context box, you're going to answer this question. Do coffee grounds make your soil acidic? We've talked about it on the program several times. Do coffee grounds make your soil acidic? This contest ends Thursday, June 4th at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, and you could be a winner. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for the week. 
Jill McSheehy is a blogger, stay-at-home mom, and podcaster. She enjoys sharing gardening info with all, especially uh, new gardeners. You can find out more information about her with journeywithjill.net. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener program radio show, Jill. Thanks, Joey and Holly. It's glad to be back with you. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to join not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country. And, and, and you're, you're, you were a new gardener at one time, like many of us, and you're going to help enlighten most of us, uh, in gardening because there's a lot of new gardeners and we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but what did, why did you create a blog, a website, and a podcast? And I think maybe I hit on a little bit of that, uh, right there in the introduction. Yeah, well, at the beginning of my gardening journey, I just blogged because that's just what I just wanted to document what I was doing with my garden. But then as I got a little bit further into it, I realized that I was kind of a teacher at heart and I wanted to be able to help other people fall in love with gardening like I had. And so that's why I created the podcast in 2017 was just to try to help people learn how to start gardening from the very beginning. Now, did you have any prior gardening expert or experience, or was this a completely new open the door here, let's try this kind of thing? It was completely new. My mom had a garden growing up, but I had no interest whatsoever in, in paying attention, so I knew nothing. I spent the fall before my first garden just researching and reading books because I had, had no background at all. Well, it's definitely amazing. Now, why? So you're very passionate about beginning gardeners or beginner gardeners, and why are you so passionate about beginner gardeners? I think because that was me. And when I first started in 2013, at least I wasn't aware of all the resources, and maybe there weren't resources back then just for beginning gardeners. I found myself looking up just the most basic things on Google, and I had trouble finding some of the most basic information. Most of the garden resources at that time seemed to expect that you had a basic knowledge of growing things. And when you don't, you kind of lack that most basic skill that is needed to begin from the, from the ground up. Well, also websites like, like yours and like ours and, and many others, we do our absolute best to put factual information. Hey, this is what works. Here's what failed. So you don't make the mistake. And there are websites that are clickbait that do not care who watches or looks as long as they get a click and they get their nickel. They're happy. And that really makes all of us look bad. Yeah. And, and I think it's hard to know and it's hard to distinguish, distinguish between the two. And so for a new gardener, those things are, it's hard to be able to disseminate. Okay. Now, we love mulch, and we feel that it's very um, important for the garden. Why, why, do you use, why do you use mulch, and what do you like to mulch with? I love to use mulch, and it's lots of different reasons. I would say number one is weed control, because all of us want to deal with fewer weeds in our garden. So mulch is definitely a big help as far as weeds go. Also, it regulates moisture, which in my area in Arkansas, we tend to be feast or famine when it comes to water. Right now in May, we have so much rain, we don't know what to do with, but the mulch in my garden almost acts like a sponge and it helps to mitigate some of that over raining that we're, over raining events that we're getting. But then it also, during the summer when it's really hot and very dry, it also helps to prevent the evaporation. And so my plants don't get water stressed as badly. And then also it helps regulate temperature. So in the hot summer in Arkansas, we get really hot and it will help to make sure the soil stays as cool as possible. And so that helps some of those uh, kind of borderline crops like tomatoes that don't really love hot, hot, hot weather. And then I just think overall, when you're using an organic mulch like I do, it overall helps to contribute to the health of the soil. I personally prefer wood chips, and that's what I've used for the last, this has been my eighth year, I suppose. I've used different methods as well on and off, but I just keep going back to wood chips. Well, let's talk about wood chips because a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't use wood chips. You're going to mix them in the soil and it's going to rob the soil of nitrogen. How how do you apply? How do you deal with the next year's crop? What what's your procedure there? Yeah, that's probably the one of the biggest questions people ask me. I'd never till it into the soil. I've transitioned my garden to a no till several years ago, but I never want to work those wood chips into the soil because that's where they're going to rob the nitrogen. 
Instead, I leave it on the ground over the winter time, and then when it's time to plant, whether that be from seed or transplant, I will rake aside the wood chips, and then I'll plant, and then I will put it back on top of the soil around the plants after the plants are about probably six inches tall or so. Now, how often do you have to add new mulch because that old mulch has broke down and fed the soil? I typically only add it once a year, but I add a really thick layer probably about four inches, I would suppose, once a year. And so I usually add it around May, and then I'll do it again the next May, typically, is what I try to do. And and then with with you getting so much rain now and the hot summers you get in Arkansas, uh, back on the farm, Grandpa always said, you're 10 days away any time in the summer from a drought. So uh, (laughs) do you utilize that mulch best you can to hold that moisture in uh, in your garden? Exactly. A lot of people will be gardening and are gardening, and we've seen, we've got questions for the first time this year for a variety of reasons, and, and we won't go into all the purposes and possibilities. What is some good information and advice you can share with a new gardener that said, hey, we are in a situation, we got time, we've never gardened before, but I think food security might be something we need to put on our radar. What do you tell those people? I think the biggest thing with a brand new beginning gardener is to understand that this year will be a learning year. I think we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves to have this amazing harvest right off the bat, and I certainly did. But I think if we understand that you don't know what pests you're going to be dealing with, what diseases, you may not even plant everything at the right time. And it's okay because we're all going to mess up that first year. So I would just kind of let yourself off the hook a little bit and just understand that that first year you're going to have some really good successes but don't get don't don't get disappointed if you get some disappointing times too that because that's just a learning curve and the next year you can adjust and you can get an even better harvest and a lot of people end up saying that their second years are even more fruitful because of being able to do that. And I'm sure that you've killed your share of plants uh, over the years like Holly and I have. Oh, yes. It's always something. So it's it's always good to just be up for learning no matter how many years of experience you have. Now, now we're always curious to, to know, you know, how people, what, what failures people have. Is there a plant that you have tried uh, to grow m- for multiple years and you've just said, hey, just can't do it, going to put something else in there that I know will will produce? I think my biggest one is broccoli in the springtime. I have never been able to get broccoli to form a head in the springtime. I think part of that is because in Arkansas we tend to go from cold to hot so fast. We have a very short, mild weather period that broccoli bolts really quickly. So I've just stopped trying to do that, and I plant it in the fall instead. And we ended up giving, getting a really good broccoli harvest in the fall. And I think that's a lot of places in this country. You go from winter to summer, and you have spring for about three days, and everything goes haywire with these cool weather pl- plants. And and we found to be true uh, with uh, rutabaga and turnips, we can't get them to grow for nothing in the spring. But those getting them planted in our particular Zone 5 area in August, the days as they get cooler and the nights get chillier, that seems like those plants really like to thrive. And I'm sure that's very similar with the uh, broccoli there in Arkansas. Yes, for sure. Okay. Um, So how can people find out more about you and find your really helpful information? Yeah, if you're a podcast listener, I would love to have you join me at the Beginner's Garden Podcast. And then you can also check out my blog at journeywithjill.net. And and I've been a guest on the podcast. And how is is the podcast linked on the website or where can we go and find all of your podcasts? Because it's one thing to read an article. Or, or watch a video, but whenever you're there, you, when we, li- when I listen to your podcast, it's almost like you're in the garden next to me going, okay, here's how you do this. Don't do this. That, and that's, I think, where you wanted that content or that, that perception to come. Yes. I think for me, I'm a podcast listener. I love learning that way. And so, yeah, I think, I think listening to someone teach on something like this, and I don't know about you, Jilly and Holly, but I love listening to gardening podcasts when I'm in the garden. You guys are out in my garden with me so, so often while I'm doing my chores. So to me, listening to a podcast is a great way to learn more about what we're doing while we're in the garden. Well, uh, we appreciate you taking us along with you as, as well as I, I, I know hundreds and hundreds of thousands of other people do based on the data that we're seeing come in, which is just 
phenomenal and, and it's really appreciative to, to hear you say that. And again, your, your website is journeywithjill.net. And we greatly appreciate, yes. and we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to not only enlighten Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. Thank you for having me. It's so much fun to chat with you guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Do not go anywhere when you, when you and I and us come back, we'll be having, answering your garden questions. We've got a question from Ed in Minnesota. We've got a question from Val in Milwaukee and we'll get to other questions throughout the country right after this. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, a program to help your garden grow better. You can bet the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener's phone lines are always jammed during the show. So Joey and Holly keep their phone lines open 24-7 to help you. Call anytime, 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-7469. Or just remember, 1-800-927-SHOW. S-H-O-W. Leave a message and they will call you back. World CoolestRainGauge.com. Need I say more? Oh, yeah. What you say? You say Nasala Kombucha. It'll put some glide in your stride and some pep in your step. Nasala Kombucha. <laughs> yeah. Nasala Kombucha makes your body happy. For all your indoor growing needs, equipment, and supplies, it's WeGrowIndoors.com. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, tomatosnaps.com. Dreaming of a lush green lawn and abundant garden? Not sure what products you need? Check with Chapin. From sprayers to spreaders to fertilizer injectors and greener gardening options, Chapin offers the products you need to weed and feed your lawn and garden. Feed your plants every time you water with Chapin's HydroFeed Fertilizer Injector. Weed a greener way with Chapin's Horticultural Vinegar Sprayer. Check with Chapin. Visit www.chapinmfg.com. Conserve water, save time, reduce runoff, eco-friendly. Visit waterhoop.com. Seed Savers Exchange has been saving, preserving, and sharing heirloom seeds since 1975 and today continues to provide those seeds to gardeners just like you with 600-plus varieties offered in this year's catalog and 18,000 listings on their exchange, their gardener-to-gardener seed swap Seed Savers Exchange is keeping cherished seed varieties alive. Visit SeedSavers.org to request a free catalog or to purchase seeds online for this year's growing season. That's SeedSavers.org. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Phylum Bioproducts, Spartan Mosquito, Dr. Jim's, Nasala Kabucha, MI Greenhouse LLC, Green Gobbler, Water Hoop, Seed Savers Exchange. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. It's time for your questions, our answers. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, your destination for all things gardening. If you've got a question, you can submit it by emailing us at gardentalkradio at gmail dot com. 
You can also give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-SHOW. Let's go up to Minnesota where Ed is listening to us on 570 WNAX. He's got a question about mulch. This is uh, Ed here in Worthington, Minnesota. Um, Got a question on cedar sawdust. Is that all right to put around tomato plants all other plants. Thank you. Cedar sawdust for mulch around vegetables and other plants, Holly. What's the answer to Ed's question? Sure. So you can put cedar you can put cedar sawdust around other plants, whether it be flowers, um, trees, bushes, shrubs, whatever. You can do that. And when it comes to vegetable plants, you do not want to put it around the vegetable plants. It can suck a lot of nitrogen out of the soil, and that could be um, Problem, harmful, problems. problematic. So, yeah, uh, non-edible plants um, you can definitely do, but vegetables, even um, like fruit, fruiting plants, something like, you know, whatever, you don't want to use that cedar sawdust. There's a lot more that goes into yard work than just cutting your grass or planting a few daisies. You have to have a little passion Know a little science, and you need to be willing to keep working when the going gets tough. Make yard work a little easier for yourself. Holly and I are excited to host a Spartan Mosquito giveaway for three listeners each week to win some product by Spartan Mosquito. We will announce the winners at the end of each week on Facebook. Enter to win by emailing gardentalkradio at gmail.com. In the subject line, put winner. You must be 18 years or older living in the contiguous United States where products are state approved. Radio show and podcast listeners are eligible. For all details, go to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and click on the Spartan Mosquito tab at the top of the page. This contest ends Friday, June 5th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can claim your prize as soon as it is announced on Facebook. If you do not claim your prize within five days, we will announce a new winner. Thank you, Spartan Mosquito, for participating with the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener for this giveaway to our listeners. All right, let's go to Val, who is listening to us on WJYI, Joy, 1340 AM and 98.7 FM in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She's got a question about pine needles. Hello, this is Val. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was wondering if it's okay to uh, mulch tomato plants in my raised garden and in my pot. I have two tomatoes in a raised garden and one in a pot on my balcony. And I was wondering if it's okay to uh, mulch them with, I put down newspaper, but that blows away. So I was wondering if I could put pine needles on top of that. What what would you recommend to keep the mud from splattering on my plants and having them diseased? Well, she's uh, she knows that you know the, the big key is that right. that prevention right. of splashing up on of the soil with not only the tomatoes but other plants. But yeah, yeah. So you can definitely use pine needles. You they're not going to change the acidity of the soil. Once those pine needles, or some people call it pine straw, falls off of the tree, the acidity um, is is no longer a problem. It dissipates very rapidly. Right. Yeah. And um, when I talked to to Val. Um, I told her that she could put it right over the newspaper, and that would be fine. So, yeah, uh, good deal on that. Uh, we had some other questions come in. If you want to be like Val and Ed and get your question on the air, you can certainly give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW. Or if you'd like to email us and uh, not uh, give us a call, you can do that at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Okay, Holly, I'm planting, I'm planning to grow black raspberry plants and one purple raspberry plant, very colorful ones, uh, in containers. Should I get, uh, should I get two 25 gallon containers or would one root run, or would the roots run out of, would the roots run out of room in a few years, uh, in a 25 gallon container? But, right, so you can get those 25 gallon, um, per plant. So you want to get two of them. And then sometimes they do create runners and more plants will be created and then you can have more plants. Um, so you, you should be, you will be fine with those 25 gallon containers. Uh, yeah. If you can get a larger container, certainly get a larger container. The bigger the container, the better you are, the half the whiskey barrel, uh, a large, uh, you know, 60 gallon grow bag, something like that. But that's a good start. You can always move them uh, to another container if necessary. 
Another question here, which is a very unique question uh, about lightning. Uh, the question is, the, are, lightning, are lightning strikes good for the garden? So I guess if you if lightning wants to strike First, down. We've never had this question. First I know, it's very we, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, if so, lightning strikes down in your garden, maybe you should go get some scratch offs that day. But um, yeah, is it is how it is? What is it? How does it affect your garden? There is no evidence that lightning strikes have a a negative effect on the soil. In fact, lightning is a source of nitrogen for your garden and for the soil. So once the nitrogen ions are carried to the soil by the rain, the nitrogen uh, mineralizes in the soil and it changes into a usable nitrate. So uh, if you want to have lightning strike your garden, you, there's ways to do such, but I would not advise that. But it's a, it's a science question and I did some research and found out that it is good uh, if your garden does get struck by lightning. Yes, yeah, science. Um, so another question we have is how to make peppers ri- ripen to red sooner. Um, you know, I, I like my peppers red, my red peppers red or whatever. How do I get them to ripe, ripen sooner? Uh, you can do three th- different things. You can leave them on the vine, which is the easiest. And it can take an extra two or three weeks after the full mature green pepper is on the vine. So you, a green pepper is an immature pepper. So if you leave them on the vine, they will change red, yellow, orange colors. Uh, um, assuming that if you have a purple pepper, that's a different, it, it'll grow, grow purple. Uh, simply leave it on the vine and, uh, the, it will ripen. Uh, uh, you can pick the ripe peppers that are green and you can bring them inside and they will ripen over time in a warm room. We've done that. Uh, in the commercial world, they will sometimes gas peppers as well as tomatoes. They'll pick them early, gas them to get them to change color. Uh, but the simplest answer would be leave them on the vine. And uh, do not cut the foliage away of the plant because that will cause sunburn and then sun scald on the, the peppers. But, yeah, leave them on the vine. Uh, you'll get a multitude of vigorous colors. And you definitely want to eat your vegetables of color because it does have beta carotene in it. Is that the what red it? ones have a lot of vitamin C. In vitamin them. C. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's just better to do that than the just, green pepper. Just, yeah, just eat all sorts of colors. Um, okay, so then we also have... Casey wants to know... Uh, can can you, you cut off outer romaine lettuce leaves? And leave the middle part to bolt. Will that still flower and produce seeds? Well, yes and no. Um, as you har- as the plant's going to bolt, and this is we're going to talk about romaine because that's what the question was about. The 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 internal portions of the plant has changed its um, molecular structure. I guess is the best way to say it, and it becomes more bitter if you was to eat that plant. Now, if you're just going to remove three or four leaves, that's fine. You're not going to destroy the photosynthesis uh, requirements for that plant to go to seed. However, those leaves will be bitter. And this is the same thing uh, this, with the romaine lettuce, the green, the red. It doesn't matter. The bitterness, you can eat these leaves. The bitterness that you get when you chew one of these leaves is from that central stem. So if you cut the leaves off and remove that central vein in the, in the leaf, you can have leaf lettuce or, or romaine lettuce all summer long without any problem, without it being bitter at all. But if you want to remove a few of the outer leaves, you'll be fine to do such. It, uh, you just don't want to remove like, you know, you can probably get 25, 30% of them and you'll be fine and still let the plant go to seed, save the seeds, replant it next year. And if you can, you can plant these in the fall as well. And we would recommend uh, the purple or burgundy, uh, romaine lettuce over the green romaine lettuce. One, because it's got that color variation in it. And, uh, in the springtime, it doesn't go to bulk or seed nearly as quick. So Gail asks, I have bitter crust hairy growing in my asparagus bed and flower garden. What can I use to eliminate this? So one thing you can do is you can certainly um, remove that by hand. As you see it come up before it gets out of before control. It gets, yeah, before it starts to seed or goes to flower. Um, another one is you can mulch. Mulching does help um, suppress weeds and helps uh yeah do things like suppress the weeds now, the now, now disclaimer when you mulch that doesn't mean every weed in the world doesn't come up you, oh, no. you will have some weeds right especially some really aggressive, but the reduction aggressive thistles for sure will definitely be the reduction through. is incredible how how effective that mulch is yes. right um you can also use a, a what's it called a weed killer that is not harmful to your asparagus and what that would be green gobbler 
horticultural grade vinegar. Uh, you can get the one gallon. You can go to Amazon. Uh, dot com. You can look for search for Green Gobbler. It's a, we we've we got found some, it at our local garden center, and it works. It, it does a top burn, and then um, it, you continue to apply it as needed. Uh, but it does work, and it's certified organic, and that's probably the best thing that you can do for those particular flower beds and uh, garden beds. Next question is about growing in milk crates. A lot of gardeners I see are setting up milk crates in such a way that they can be self-watering or self-wicking. However, I would like to simply insert a 8-inch long by half-inch diameter pipe or hose uh, through the side of the milk crate and the burlap liner roughly about 3 inches high off the base. Would this work? Do you see any advantages or disadvantages to approaching this system directly over the plants? Would it be better or is it better to put it through the crate itself when I have multiple crates such as a strawberry tower hooked up? Well, I think the, the plan you would, you're, you're looking at or you would want to do, I think if you put the, the, the irrigation system in the center of that milk crate, it would be okay. I would still, if you're going multiple towers, then yeah, that would work. If you're going single milk crate, I would put it on top to allow the water to permeate all the way through the system and go from top to bottom like a, a green stock grow tower type of system. Um, a lot of people are experimenting with these and they have great success with them. However, you need to make sure, again, uh, with this irrigation system, you don't overwater or you don't underwater. And I would say you could do it both ways, but again, single layer, put that irrigation system on top, allow the water to go all the way from the top to the bottom of that milk crate that's filled with soil, that's got a burlap liner, and the holes on the outer side you've cut, and you've got plants growing out the side and the top. But if you have multiple milk crates, like three or four high, and you have strawberries coming out of those, then you could do the inserting of the irrigation system in the center of the tower and have, you know, three or four different pipes going on each or one pipe going through each level midway through so it would hydrate the center portion of the the milk crate correctly and properly. So that's what I would suggest you uh, do on that. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly thank you for yours. Miss any portion of this show or want to revisit in its entirety, you can do that by going to the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and clicking on the Radio Season 4 tab at the top of the page. Or you can send us an email at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com and say, hey, send me that show you talked about mulch and slugs and you had Jill on. We can do that for you at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Send us that email. Check out past shows on our website as well. In video, we do videos 12 a week and uh, all of our other content. Tell your garden friends that this program's on the air as that's how we get our message heard. Join us next week on the show when we'll be talking about 10 good bugs in your garden and if you don't have them, how to get them there. And gardening with pets. How therapeutical is it really based on the science? Our guest will be... Uh, author Lily Lay will be with us. We will also answer your garden questions. So until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.